Mic check. One, two. Today we're going to talk about how to use Adobe Lightroom for beginners. This is gonna be a step-by-step -step guide, so buckle up and let's do this. What's up guys, this is Justin and welcome to my channel. If you're all about learning about photography, videography or general camera knowledge, then start right now by subscribing to my channel as well as clicking the bell button beside. Also follow me on Instagram if you want to learn more about camera settings because I post my settings alongside with my photos every single day. I've recently launched my Cyberpunk Lightroom presets and profiles on my website. Check them out if you like. I will link it down below in the description. Adobe Lightroom is certainly one of the must-have software that you need if you want to improve your photography and your skills. But things can be a little bit hard and intimidating if you're just starting out. Just like I was, I was struggling on where to start, what button should I click, and so on. So here's a guide to help you to get started. Firstly, there are three versions of Lightrooms. We got the Lightroom CC and Lightroom Classic, as well as the Lightroom Mobile but generally they do pretty much the same thing. So by learning one of them, you'll be able to use all of them. There are specific functions and strengths of each Lightroom, but I'll explain them in the future. For now, let's get on with the Adobe Lightroom tutorials. First, let's talk about how you can import photos into Lightroom. So here's a pro tip for you guys. Before importing any photos into Lightroom, make sure that your photos are organized in your desktop first. And the reason behind this is that Lightroom's file management system is a bit of a hassle. So it's advised that you organize everything in your desktop first before importing them into Lightroom. Make sure you're in the library module. You can find that on top of the right corner area. Next, look for the Photos panel on the left side and click on the plus icon to add a folder. I suggest you to do that first before anything else because we are talking about the basics of the basics here. Lightroom will have a preview for you on all the photos you have saved in a folder. You can either select them or deselect any photos that you don't want and then click import. The steps are pretty easy and straightforward. And if you got the time, play around with the file management system and you will know what I'm talking about. Feel free. <laughs> Feel free to familiarize yourself with the file management system even more with the smart collection, subfolders, and so on. Or just subscribe to my channel right now to receive updates every time I post a tutorial. Once you've got your photos imported, it's time to get them developed. The develop part is the hardest part and this is where beginners are confused. You can find the develop module on the top right corner area. Understanding each and every slider can be a time-consuming and soul-crushing task especially if you're into this without any knowledge beforehand. Trust me, I know how it feels. I was just like you. Anyway, here's a pro tip for you guys. Always color grade or always develop your photos step by step. Do not skip any of it because you're going to spend more time going back afterwards, resetting everything and starting from scratch. I learned from the hard way. I insist on not watching on any YouTube videos before I started. And yeah, I kind of regret I spent a lot of time on this. What would I do before anything else is to get to the lens correction section. Adobe Lightroom is kind of like a genius because it has like almost every lens's profile. This is the part where I usually let software do its job by taking the remove chromatic aberration and also enable profile correction. It works 98% of the time. If not, then I'll just go manually and adjust the settings myself. If you're still not happy with your picture composition, then let's do some transformation by going to the transformation panel. There you can adjust the scale, the rotation, the X offset, the Y offset, and so on. Play around with that. Don't be afraid of the slider. Make it go extreme because you can always reset it by clicking the slider thingy. Yeah, it's the slider thingy, it's on the screen. Okay, now it's time for the real good stuff. Before color grading, it's important that your photos are in neutral colors. Make sure that it's not overly exposed, it's not underexposed because we are going to do that in the color grading part. By that, I mean it's not underexposed, it's not overexposed, 
it's balanced. You can make these basic adjustments in the basics panel, where you can find the temperature, the white balance, the shadows, the white, the blacks, and so on. My advice to you is to always experiment and make extreme adjustments to see the effects. You can start by lowering down the contrast to the extreme and then raising the shadows as well as the blacks, just to see what kind of effects each parameter brings. Start from the top to the bottom to achieve any kind of look that you want. Once you're done with the basic adjustments, it's time for the really, really, really good stuff. For this tutorial, we are going to ignore the tone curves as well as the split toning all together because those are really the next level stuff. So just click on HSL or color and you will see all the colors over there. HSL means hue, saturation, and luminance. Well, typically colors is more favorable because you can see all the color panels over there instead of going to HSL where all the colors are split individually to hue, saturation, and luminance. Well, in colors panel, you can see everything stacked up from top to bottom. And by clicking the small all text, you can actually display all the colors from red, yellow, orange, blue, aqua, magenta, and purple, like straight down so you can get a whole view of the colors you're, you're working with. In color, you can control the hue, saturation, as well as the luminance, just like in HSL. And by doing so, you have literally unlimited color combinations. Well, take your time in adjusting the colors. Maybe you can make the red more yellowish, or you may be making the yellow more reddish, making the blue to aqua. That's what I do anyway. So take your time, make your own adjustment, and when you're done, it's time to export. To export is really easy. Just go to File and Export. Choose your settings properly and choose where you want to save the photos and then click Export. It's that easy. So this is how I get started on Adobe Lightroom by following the step that I've just mentioned to you. I think that this is a very good guide for you to get started so that you don't confuse yourself and just give up halfway or something like that. I don't want you to get discouraged because you don't know how to use them. But that's all for the tutorial of how to use Lightroom for beginners. Obviously, there are a lot more ways to use it and there are more advanced ways as well. But if you're just starting out, use this as a guide to get you started. I do a lot of night photography in my spare time and I use Adobe Lightroom exclusively to color grade my photos. And again, recently, I have created my own Cyberpunk Lightroom presets and profiles. They're on my website. Check them out. Greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate it. There will be a free version coming out soon, so don't miss out by hitting the subscribe button as well as the bell button beside. Also, if you're looking to a more detailed explanation and a more detailed guide, there is a written article for this video on my website as well, down in the description below. Like if you like this video and thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye-bye.